Hey, Kelly, how's it going? Lisa, it is excellent. <laughs> we finally got some sun outside. It is great down here in South Florida. It is definitely a beautiful day, and I know it's starting to cool off. Fall is in the air. Tell us yes. what is coming up on today's voting broadcast. Hey, well, speaking of fall, uh, big news in the boating world, FLIBS, for those of you who don't know, Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show is a go. So yes. we are excited. The end of October is the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show, October 28th to the November 1st. So we're mm -hmm. going to be talking about that. Um, also, we will be talking uh, all things Scout, which will be at the Fort yes. Lauderdale Boat Show. They have the new 2021 350 LXZ. We have a cool video to show you for that. And for all those listeners out there, they can be sure to check it out. Uh, our special guest is Seamus Warren, who is Director of Development for the National Pediatric Cancer Foundation. We're going to be talking yes. to him about a fishing tournament that they're going to be doing in the Tampa Bay area. Yep. And uh, finishing up with a social update from Landon has some really cool videos uh, showing more nature. I think we're, we're learning a theme with Landon. He loves nature. So we're, we're, we're checking out some stingrays and uh, seeing some cool new ways that boats are being made. So yes. you've got to check it out. Welcome to From the Helm Boating Broadcast with Marine Max, bringing you the latest news and notes in the world of boats. Welcome to From the Helm Boating Broadcast, everyone. We are your hosts, Lisa and Kelly. Please interact with us in the comments section. And if you like what you see, share it with your friends. The more the merrier. We'd love to hear from you. And if you're tuning in audio only listener, thank you so much for joining us. If you'd love to see what you're watching, you can always check us out on Facebook and YouTube. Just search for Marine Max or on marinemax.com. We have a lifestyles blog section where you can access all of these video podcasts. You can read the transcripts, you can click on links, you can, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just give it another listen if you'd like. Share it with a friend, that's always good too. All right, so we are gonna roll into our headlines. Yes. And first up, like Kelly mentioned, the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show is a go. This is the 61st annual boat show. Wow. And they were just recently given the green light to proceed with the show after mm -hmm. the Broward County Commission voted in early September in favor of allowing the event to run in spite of lingering concerns for the potential spread of COVID. Of course, they have an action plan ready to go. Uh, it's a multi-point safety plan with, with a lot of the stuff that you've seen. Masks required, hand sanitizer yep. everywhere, social distancing, wider docks, all good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think uh, this is going to be a show that, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be the hordes of people everywhere clamoring to hop aboard a boat. It's certainly going to be a bit more distance, per se, uh, mm -hmm. and cl clean. You know, I think they're going to be checking people's temperatures. So be sure yeah. to check out the, you know, flips.com for more information on it. And what I also recommend doing is be sure to talk to uh, the manufacturers uh, or Marine Max team members before you go. Uh, starting now probably say yeah. hey i want to be at the show i want to be checking out these boats because a lot of this is going to be you know a uh, appointment basis so you know if you're you're ready to go and you've already spoke to your team member over at marine max uh, you'll have a better opportunity to get aboard the boat that you want to see at the mm -hmm. show that's so, all good points so the yeah. show is scheduled to run from october 28th to november 1st mm -hmm. and it draws an estimated 1,000 1, exhibitors and attendees each year so We'll see what those numbers do. Um, it's a huge boost in the local economy. It's a $1.3 billion uh, economic boost for the yeah. state of Florida. I mean, a lot of people fly in, like I said, it's international. So it'll be interesting to see this year, you know, who who participates and who and who is actually, you know, what are they bringing? Because mm -hmm. um, we know inventory has been a little lean. So it, it'll be- hey, It was, it's, it's back. It was, I mean, uh... that's true. <laughs> It's crazy, but yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, all the light, all the manufacturers, uh, they will, for the most part, uh, you know, things change on a daily basis, but they're going to be there. Uh, you can see they'll be bringing their latest and greatest models to the show, including the 350 LXE. I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, from yeah, Scouts. We'll see. So we'll, we'll see. We'll be talking about that. Well, let's 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 pull that up because I actually did not see this, so I'm glad you found it. So this yeah. is the all new uh, 2021 Scout 350. LXZ, yes. all new model, all new class of boat. And uh, on their website, it says debuting early 2021. So that's a little after flibs, but you know what? They may sneak one up past us. Well, if, if you never know. I, and 
and maybe I jumped the gun a little bit, but at the same time, they'll definitely have more information on it at the show. They oh, yeah. might have a, a model or uh, certainly some content that you can learn more. Um, and of course, talk to the team if you're interested in you know purchasing one of these yourselves. You know, a big uh, thing in the industry these days is is kind of specking yours out. So if you're looking yeah. interested in the new LXZ, and we did talk about this, I think we had an opportunity to talk to Alan Lang uh, a few months back, and he did kind of spill the spill the beans about the uh, the new LXZ. So this is going to be one heck of a boat here. This is just cool. The 350 so LXZ. S class, they're calling it. Yeah. So this is a luxury crossover model, and it will be the initial debut of the LXZ series. So uh, it's a sophisticated masterpiece, unlike anything out in the marketplace today. A high end day cruiser, ideal for refined entertainment with overnight accommodations. Mm -hmm. um, it is meticulously crafted. As you can see, we're looking at some great renderings here. Cutting edge epoxy infusion construction, highest performing dual scout stepped hull technology. Um, and then, you know, pairing it with sophisticated blend of technologies. So this is pretty exciting news from Scout, a brand new class of boat. And it yeah. looks a little different. It still has that great Scout, all those lines and, and the deep hole, but a little mm -hmm. looks a little different. What do you think of this, it's, Kelly? It, oh, I think it's beautiful and it's certainly unique. Um, you know, Scout for is sure. known for their looks. Uh, I personally, mm -hmm. I believe that, you know, because every time you see one out on the water, you're like, what's that beautiful? Oh, of course, it's a Scout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, certainly this thing's going to be a, a pretty, uh, pretty awesome boat here and would love to hop aboard and, and learn a little bit more about it. We do have a video on this boat uh, for okay. all those audio only listeners. Uh, you know, you can check out the the video actually, just type in Scout 350 LXZ at YouTube and I think uh, Marine Max has it up. Uh, but let's check it out here. And I won't play the whole thing, but uh, at least we can kind of talk about it as we see uh, mm -hmm. the video. Um, and nice some of these- there. Cool sunroof, yeah. Some, some slats on the sides to open it up to get a little bit more uh, uh, air into the cockpit, but wow, all right, 350 LXE. All right, and then yeah. I think they kind of go into uh, you know, the, the manufacturing process of this new boat. And I think, didn't when we talked to Alan, didn't he like have it like in the background or it was like under wraps? They're like still kind of just finalizing a few things about it, yes, yeah. I, I know that he really wanted to talk about it, but couldn't, so we teased it a little bit. So it's nice to see some, uh, renderings and uh, mm -hmm. up on the website and, and the team working there. I know there's a lot of engineering that goes into creating a new boat, but not a, a, a completely new class of boat. So yep. um, I would imagine there's a lot of research and this has probably been a, at least a year, if not more in the making to, to put together all of these touches. I mean, look at how detailed these guys are with engineering. Yeah. I have to say it's a blast to work on those Wacom Cintiq the, the little drawing tablets you can do. I mean, it's, it's, I guess you can do it with an iPad these days, but back in uh, design school, just to, to draw directly on screen was just like wave of the future. And now look at, they're building boats, you know, just look at that, uh, a, a small model three, looks like they're using a 3D printer there to, to create these models. Oh my gosh. We got some fun 3D printing uh, video ahead too. Yes. <laughs> All right, so that's the Scout 350 LXE. If you want to learn more, you know, be sure to check it out at scoutboats.com. Uh, you can also check out the really cool video um, on their Vimeo or on the Marine Max YouTube channel to uh, to get a little bit more information and to see this entire video in itself. Well, I'd love to welcome Seamus Warren. He is the Director of Development for the National Pediatric Cancer Foundation. Welcome, Seamus. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, welcome, Thank sir. Thank you, Lisa and Kelly. I appreciate y'all having me on. I have to say it's a it's it's always nice to have a friendly face in the Tampa Bay area too, right, Lisa? Oh yes, oh yeah, <laughs> and we're we're actually getting some sunshine today, which is great. <laughs> yes, <laughs> finally. <laughs> yeah. All awesome. right. So, give us a little bit of rundown. Tell us a little bit more about the National Pediatric Cancer Foundation. Sure. Yeah, we're we're based here in uh, in Tampa, um, but we are a national foundation. We we do work in all fifty states. And um, just like our name implies, we, we raise funds for pediatric cancer uh, research. That's, that's all we do. Excellent. And so there are a lot of other organizations that raise money for cancer research. What makes your organization different? Yeah, so um, we, you know, you hear all the time about all the money that's raised for pediatric cancer mm -hmm. research. There's billions of dollars that are spent every year um, by the government. Um, interesting 
statistic is that of all those billions of dollars, only 4% of that is directed toward pediatric cancer research, which is kind of shocking. Yes. So that's really why we exist along with some others in our space. Where we're different from those uh, others is we require um, the institutes that we um, fund research with to collaborate with each other. We, we force them to speak with each other and share their research and share their findings. And as a result of that, we're coming up with these really innovative and, and groundbreaking drug combinations and treatments and therapies that, that no one else is even looking at because nobody else has that collaborative model. Well, good for you, because that just makes sense. Yeah, it really <laughs> you does. Know, together, the more more brains, more more power. So uh, we're pulling up the website right now. Mm -hmm. I know that you your organization does a lot in the community. And one of the reasons we're talking to you today is that you're you're hosting a fishing tournament in mm -hmm. Tampa uh, boating. So that's how we found you. Um, and the 30 second intro video is a great recap or just kind of an overview of, of what that is. And the, the program's called Fishing Funds the Cure. And Kelly, if you can bring up that video, um, Seamus, kind of give us an overview of, of this program. Sure. Yeah, well, we, um, we use a lot of different um, mechanisms to raise money and awareness. And mm -hmm. one of the ways that we've found um, success is through fishing. Everybody loves to go fishing. Oh yeah. And, uh, through great partners such as such as Marine Max, um, we're able to present these wonderful tournaments. So this this particular one that you're seeing the video on now is is um, at the Trade Winds Resort on St. Pete Beach, uh, and we fish out of the Marine Max uh, basin there, um, mm -hmm. October 14th through the 16th. I'm sorry, the 16th through the 18th, mm -hmm. and um, we um, we bring together people from all over the country for a couple of days of, of guided inshore fishing. Um, and uh, with all the bells and whistles that come with that, and dinners and galas and auctions, and we raise a lot of good money um, for our for our mission. Wow! And, and what did they do? So, what, when when that money is raised, how does that go towards uh, finding the cures to these these certain issues? Um, sure. you know, what what are what are some of the ways that it, it helps out? Absolutely. So we again through through our collaborative research model, we we identify every year. Um, various institutes that are doing pediatric specific research and um, they can apply with the foundation to um, have their grant or part of part of their uh, their research funded and um, if, if through our um, investigative process we we deem that that um, uh, particular study is is um, worthy of funding then then we'll Put the money toward it right away. We we don't have to deal with any of the government red tape or any of the um, things that most institutes deal with. We can actually take a, a concept to trial in a mm -hmm. little three months, where the traditional model takes anywhere from three to five years. Wow! All right. And I so, did I did for again just real quick for everybody that uh, is more interested in hear more about uh, uh, the National Pediatric Center uh, Cancer Foundation. Uh, it's national pcf.org so that's the website that we are on here uh, you can donate you can look and, and learn more and uh, about their programs and of course uh, as Seamus had mentioned about the research that they're doing yes yep. and you can Absolutely. also follow them on all the social media channels uh, search national pediatric cancer and you'll you'll find them everywhere Facebook Instagram YouTube they've got a bunch of information everywhere so sorry Seamus yep. I cut you off you're about to say something <laughs> no Another way you can find us um, just for this, the fishing related stuff is, is a, a, another website that drives us, uh, drives you directly to the fishing. It's, it's real easy to remember. It's fishingfundsthecure.org uh, and it takes us directly to our fishing uh, engagements. Awesome. Awesome. And I'm bringing that up now for uh, for those of you who don't have a, a browser handy. Uh, so we can <laughs> kind of, and, and I'll, I'll put this full screen here, Seamus, so you kind of maybe talk a little bit about it and uh, a little bit more, uh, you know, in terms of uh, how this process works and, um, you know, who's all involved here. Sure. Yeah. So right now we we're actually running three separate tournaments. Um, we're getting ready to wrap up what we call the all American fishing tournament. And that's that's a really cool concept. It's a um, it's a virtual tournament for $25. You can enter yeah. anywhere in the country and fish uh, all the way through the end of September. And we'll run it again next year, but we've designed it to where you can catch uh, five freshwater and five saltwater species pretty much anywhere in the country and mm -hmm. log it on a, on an app, uh, catch and release. And uh, at the end of the tournament, at the end of September, you uh, are in the running for 
some great prizes. We've teamed with Salt Life for uh, all kinds of giveaways and and uh, just some really cool stuff. So, uh, and then then we've got our, our our Tampa Bay tournament that we've been speaking about. Mm-hmm. We've got another one uh, coming up in Galveston in November, and then we're um, finalizing plans to do one in Sarasota um, next spring. So, lots of stuff going on and. Uh, I'd also like to point out that that we're certainly not limited to these four. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, we, because we work all over the country, we're always looking for uh, new partners and and, um, new folks to engage with. So, you know, if you already are in an existing fishing tournament uh, and would like to adopt us as a charity of choice, we'd love to talk to you. If you'd love to create a tournament, we we can absolutely uh, have that discussion as well because we we need that awareness. We don't spend money Mm -hmm. on paid advertising. So we, we, right. uh, it's, a lot of it is word of mouth. So, um, you know, just that awareness is, is a huge component for, for what we do. Hey, Lisa and Seamus, yeah. I think, I, I think I know a few people, uh, you know, know. <laughs> with Marie Max, you know, certainly, uh, Seamus up, up in the Northeast, you know, we have a bunch of, uh, stores located along the Eastern seaboard, uh, down to even Wrightsville beach, North Carolina. And of course our friends up in Minnesota and the Midwest area too, uh, big walleye fishermen up there too. So I'm sure that there's uh, opportunities abound to uh, to continue to expand and, and get into new territories for sure. Absolutely. I'm not opposed to going striper fishing or walleye fishing or any kind of fishing. You, you name it, I'm, I'll be there. <laughs> what about ice fishing though? But in the, in the wintertime? <laughs> hey, you know what? I got to, even though I'm from Florida, I've, I've got a coat somewhere in my attic. I can find it. <laughs> I'll give it a shot. Hey. Shane, I just have to ask real quick, uh, are you a fisherman yourself? Are you are you big into fishing? I am, yeah. In fact, I was up in uh, Homosassa last weekend with my son catching uh, big old redfish and some trout, and, and I love it. I'm, I'm a fourth generation uh, Florida boy, so you kind of, it's, nice. it's in my blood. Oh, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Good to so hear. One of the terms you mentioned when describing the Tampa Bay tournament is you said it's a guided tour. What does that mean? So we, um, we work with local professional guides. So when you uh, sign up to fish in this, in this particular tournament, you'll be paired with a guide and um, who knows the local water. And um, it's, it's two days. It's a snook and redfish and trout um, tournament. So um, we can't think of anybody that's going to know where to catch those particular fish uh, any better than a, than a guy that does it all day, every day. And, and uh, Oh yeah. So, you know, if you're a novice fisherman, it's a great way to, to learn a little bit more. If you're, if you're a pro guy, maybe you pick up a couple uh, uh, tips and some good spots to go fishing the next time you're, you're out on your own. But um, we, we uh, traditionally float anywhere from 35 to 60 boats. It's a big tournament. And um, wow. yeah, so it's, it's, it's real popular when we, when we run this tournament. And we've been running this particular model for over 20 years. So we've, um, we know what we're doing. We've gotten gotten uh, gotten pretty good at it so this tournament per- t- typically raises uh close to five hundred thousand dollars for us over the course of the weekend oh, wow. so it's, wow. it's a big big event for us okay and so how can people register sure again you just go back to that fishing funds the uh website and click on uh the the tampa bay uh, button there and it'll take you directly to the registration page um if uh if you'd rather call us you can certainly uh, just give us a call at 813-269-0955 mm-hmm. and I'll I'll take your information down and we'll get you squared away. Awesome. That's and great. I know registration, there's a cost to registration, but it includes uh, quite a bit of activity and food. Um, what is the deal there? Yeah, so there's all there's all different levels of registration. I mean, you can you can uh, come fish with us for as little as 250 bucks. If you're a larger corporation, you can you can spend northwards of thirty thousand dollars for a larger sponsorship to come uh, be a part of this event. But um, yeah, it's, it for for the price of entry, um, a, a single boat guided boat for two days is is twenty five hundred dollars, and that includes three anglers plus the guide. It includes uh, the Friday night uh, gala, which is a live and silent auction and, and open bar and and food. Um, and entertainment. And then Saturday, there's a breakfast. Uh, we provide lunch and um, same thing on Sunday. There's a breakfast, a lunch, and then an award ceremony and a barbecue dinner. Um, and wow. all of that's included. Plus you get all kinds of swag. There's an angler's bag with shirts and I mean, all kinds of neat stuff in there that, that uh, we've, we've arranged through our partners. So it's, it's a really good value when you break out. Uh, you know, if you want to go fishing with a couple buddies over the weekend, it, um, it actually works out pretty well. And and again, you know, at the end of the day, we're we're doing some really good work with that money. 
um, this, this foundation uh, is actually the most um, efficient and transparent cancer nonprofit in the country. We, we dedicate 87 cents out of every dollar that we take in directly toward our mission. Uh, if you go on the Charity Navigator, you can check us out, and, and we're actually the top-rated cancer nonprofit in the country for those reasons. So, pretty mm-hmm. pretty powerful statement. Um, yeah. You know, we're, we we uh, we put our our money where our mouth is, and and um, you know, are pretty good at, at getting the job done. So, well, and well I see congratulations here too. on that. That is, I mean, that's quite the the feat right there. I mean, and you know, putting you know, everything you're saying, you're transparent and it's out there and you're ranked number one. That's, that's fabulous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And that's important to us. And, oh, you yeah. know, and these days uh, we're, we're pennies get a little tighter and, uh, but you still have a heart and want to give. Um, it's comforting to know where your money's going and it's not getting mm-hmm. spent on somebody's vacation house or somebody's Maserati, <laughs> but it's actually going towards right. the mission. <laughs> um, I, I, as, as you've been discussing, I've, I've been kind of looking to it too, and uh, it doesn't just uh, end with fishing funding the cure either, right? This is uh, this goes much deeper than that, and uh, from what I've seen here, there's a lot of different ones, including brewing funding the cure, cooking okay, funding the cure. Okay, we got to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's start with brewing funding the cure. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. So this is uh, our third year of engagement with, with Brewing Funds the Cure. We, we started locally with um, a couple of craft brewers here in Tampa. You may have heard of them, Cigar City and Brew Bus. Yes. Oh, yeah. And um, they collaborated with us to create um, a beer called Rising Hope. Um, and we've, we've now expanded that into um, uh, 50, all 50 states. And we're working with craft breweries all over the country to um, where we've had the, the ingredients donated, you know, the hops oh, wow. and the malt and all these the fruit. And um, if, a, if a craft brewer in another state wants to get involved with us, um, we can have all that product donated to them. They create uh, the beer and then sell it, and then they give us 100% of the proceeds back. So it's, wow. it's really exciting, and, and it's just amazing how that takes off. And um, so that's, it's been a lot of fun, and, and we're, we're really on the uptick. And, and we actually now have coffee, too, um, which is mm-hmm. you know, yeah. technically brewing. And um, so Kawa Coffee is now our, our new national partner, so you can – you can find that uh, in the grocery store or, or online, yep. and, and uh, same sort of thing. They they created a bag for us and and uh, give us a percentage of the proceeds back from from uh, the coffee they sell. I think so. You basically, you're saying if uh, <laughs> yeah, I think you're saying kind of basically if it's uh, it, it, no matter what you're interested in, uh, there's ways to donate to the cause or to help the cause overall, right? A hundred percent, yeah, uh, Kelly. And and you know the cool thing about working here is we're not limited to mode a b c d or fundraising if we, we have people come to us all the time and say hey have you ever done this or would you like to try that great example mm-hmm. i love to give is a couple of years ago we had a young man in the midwest who challenged all his friends to eat chocolate covered crickets and he raised okay. he raised money and you know for a hundred bucks or whatever it was he, he'd eat a chocolate covered cricket and, and he raised like three or four thousand dollars for us wow and sent it in and it was great you know so we're we're wide open to these great innovative different ideas and mm-hmm. um and we love we love that thought. You know, there's all the traditional models of fundraising, and then we find these really mm-hmm. unique um, uh, little one-offs that are, that are a lot of fun to work on. Wow, Lisa, would you eat chocolate covered crickets for uh, funding for the cure? Yep, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I really would. Oh, I would yeah. also drink beer for the cure. So I, <laughs> and coffee. I have, and coffee. I, I, I'm gonna have to hit up Kawa and Cigar City this weekend. Yep. Yeah. So, the beer, I, beer is I, in the fridge right now at, at, at yeah. uh, Cigars for the Amber Bus. Nice. That's great. And it feels good, right? When you're, you know, you're purchasing a product that helps a great cause. I uh, kind of like shopping local and, you know, helping out your local communities. It makes you feel good. Yeah. Um, so another one of the programs I'd love you to talk about is Fashion Funds the Cure. So in 2018, uh, which is when I first met your team, they reached out and I actually got invited to the 2018 uh, Fashion Fund Secure event in Tampa. And it was one of the most moving events I have ever been to. And it was down at the port in uh, Tampa. It was in this like warehouse looking space that was just decorated beautifully, very simple, very, uh, you know, boutique. And they had, I mean, Seamus, tell us about Fashion Fund Secure because I'm getting goosebumps just trying to talk about it. <laughs> It, it is so special. And, and Lisa, that was actually my first engagement with the foundation too. Before I even came to work here, I was exposed to a fashion show. Um, not that I'm a big fashion 
guy, as you can <laughs> tell, but, um, but it's such a special thing. And, and, uh, in, in addition to the fishing, that's our other sort of signature event that we do. Um, and, uh, it's, it's, it's exactly what you think. It's a traditional fashion show. So we have professional models that, that walk the runway in the current fashion trends. Uh, and then we have kids that are currently battling or uh, in remission from cancer, walk the runway based uh, uh, wearing their uh, current fashion trends. But the coolest part of the evening is they do a second walk um, dressed based on what they want to be when they grow up. So, you know, if they want to be a police officer or a fireman or whatever, um, we'll, we'll dress them up um, like that dream. We call it the dream walk. Yeah. And then we pair them with someone from that field. So we'll call the chief of police or the chief of the fire department or, you know, a pilot or whatever. And they'll cool. walk the runway with them. And it's very emotional, not, not in a bad way. It's, it's a positive thing because you see these little guys and girls um, with these huge smiles on their faces and they're not thinking about chemo treatment or going back to the mm-hmm. hospital, but it's, it's, they're sitting there with their hero and it gives them hope. And, you know, I can beat this thing and I can go on to be, this, you know, this, this image of this person that that's walking down the runway with me. And it's, it's just really, really powerful, and really cool. So we've actually expanded that, uh, into 17 different markets and COVID has put a little bit of a, uh, a damper on the actual event. Um, yeah. so we're doing some of this stuff virtually. We're, we're, we're trying to find some workarounds to where we can, um, either live stream, uh, in a, in a clean environment. Uh, to have these kids who are already immunocompromised because of the chemo treatment oh, or the drug treatments um, and still be able to host these things. Uh, so we're looking uh, to do that Tampa show that you you experienced, Lisa, um, in late October or November. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're just we're just working through the elements right now to make sure we can make it safe for everybody. But it's um, it's powerful. And, and actually, for this for this Tampa uh, fishing tournament, we're going to try to incorporate a small element of this fashion show um, into that as well, probably through, um, some video on Friday night. So if you've never experienced it, um, I highly recommend it. It's, it'll, it'll change your life. I, I can attest to that. I'm getting teary eyed, even just hearing you talk about it. I mean, going to an event like that, you know, it's going to be a little emotional. I was overwhelmed with, I was actively sobbing in like a happy, like weird way. It was, it's, it's quite the event, that is for sure. So if, you, if anybody's looking for more information, I, their website is is available. Um, so much more video, photo, uh, descriptions about all these things. And we've only just scratched the surface. Mm-hmm. There are a ton of ways to give. I mean, there's a donate monthly button if you want to just make that a budgeted thing in your life. Um, they'll they'll work with you. And, and like, like Seamus said, they're number one with uh, making sure their proceeds and everything that they raise as much of it as they can possibly get goes to cancer research. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I highly recommend just going to national PCF.org because uh, like you said, Lisa, there, there's a million ways to um, become a part of this right now. You're seeing this 43 challenge. That's, this is a new endeavor for us to where uh, the 43 represents the 43 kids every day that are diagnosed with pediatric cancer. And there's so many different ways we're doing virtual walks. We're doing, Mm -hmm. um, you know, cooking funds to cure. We're doing, I mean, all kinds of just really cool stuff. And you can do it from your own neighborhood or your own house or, or, you know, there's just so many different ways to get involved with us. So go to the website or, or give us a call. We'd love to talk to you about uh, any or all of these uh, different ways to, to engage with us. And, and I promise you um, that if you do become involved with us, it, you are making a difference. You're not throwing money, um, you know, somewhere where right. you're never going to see it again. It, it truly makes a difference. It takes $15,000 to put a kid through a clinical trial and wow. which, you know, really in the grand scheme of things, isn't that much money. Um, so collectively we really can change the life of potentially thousands of, of children uh, through the research yeah. that we're doing. Well, it's just great that you, there, you have options. I mean, mm-hmm. if, if you want to just basically donate and, and provide some funds, you can do so. Otherwise you could also, get involved with things like, like the fishing tournament. Um, but also it sounds like, you know, on your side, becoming part of the back end of the whole process, um, is also available to people. So there's just so many different ways to get involved. Uh, national pediatric cancer foundation, national PCF.org is the website that we're on here. And you can learn all about fashion shows, fishing, 
beer runs, coffee. <laughs> I mean, Kawa coffee. I mean, there's just so many opportunities to uh, get involved and actually just have a good time while you're at it too. So really cool. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I tell you, you, you mentioned all those things. My, my dream personally is to combine all that stuff. I want a fishing yeah. tournament with beer and fashion <laughs> and all this other stuff and just have this huge blowout. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. There. Well, and, and it's good to see even uh, in these these crazy times, you know, this continues to to progress. You know, a lot of things were put on hold, and I'm sure that even uh, you know uh, your your uh, foundation has taken some different different routes uh, to to make these things happen. But it's great to just see progression uh, through these this crazy year of 2020 that we've been experiencing. <laughs> It is crazy. And I am, you know, that what we say in the office all the time is just because this, this thing is upon us, cancer doesn't quit, you know, right. you know, these kids, like I said earlier, they're already compromised. So they're used to wearing the masks. They're used to being socially distant because they've had mm. to be already because their little immune systems are, are, um, are struggling to keep yeah. up, uh, even before COVID. So, um, yeah, cancer doesn't quit. We've, we've got to keep this research going and, and, um, we're, uh, we're, we're really trying hard to figure out these new and innovative ways to, to um, you know, keep raising funds for these kids. So um, yeah. we really, we really um, appreciate everybody's support. We appreciate you guys at Marine Max for uh, working with us and, and, and our other partners as well. Um, so thank you guys so much for, for everything. Of course. You're doing. Well, yeah, thank of you course. for your time today. Uh, we know you are a busy man. Um, so we'll wrap things up. I, I, we could, you know, continue talking about all the cool programs that that you have going on. Uh, really, just making donations, donating an easier thing for people. Um, so, any other final thoughts from you, Seamus? Uh, just, just like I said, just just remember that cancer doesn't quit. And regardless yeah. of what uh, your personal situation is in your life, um, think about these these kids that that are just getting started with their lives. You know, these 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 innocent children that had never asked to have cancer and uh, it was forced upon them. And, um, you know, we just, we just need to find faster cures for these, for these guys so that they have a chance, just like, you know, all of us are living our lives and, and mm -hmm. everybody, everybody, you know, is impacted by cancer in some way. So mm -hmm. um, just think about that when it comes to a child who, who we just need to get a fighting chance. Um, right. Sure a better life so thank you guys i appreciate it well said well thank you sir so the, again that's uh, nationalpcf.org if you'd like to learn more and uh if you're interested uh, maybe do a little bit of fishing while you're at it <laughs> yeah absolutely got the tampa tournament yep. uh, you can register online i think registration is open for another couple weeks correct mm -hmm. We can um, take you we can take you up, up right until the week of the tournament um, all right there you but go the earlier the better right got to plan for it got to plan for it all right, thank you so much, Seamus. Uh, we will be sure to to keep in touch with you and, and hear all the updates. Awesome, thank you guys. All right, thank thanks. You, Have a good day. Bye -bye. All right. Well, I mean, uh, combine <laughs> two two great things, you know, uh, uh, you know, foundation to to learn for cures for major you know conditions like cancer, but also, um, I guess, in a way, have fun while doing it too. So I think that that's just a, a huge benefit to. Uh, to everybody involved and especially just the Tampa Bay area too. It's just a, it's great that this, these kind of things are happening in our community. Yes. I, I could not agree more. He hit me in the feels. I don't know if I have messed up my makeup, but I definitely was uh, doing some tearing, just kind of thinking back to that fashion funds, the cure event that mm -hmm. was amazing. You know, little kids, yep. you know, beating cancer. <laughs> yeah. It's like one of the first yeah. things you do in life. <laughs> Well, and it's it's great that it's they evolve. Um, uh, you know, as you mentioned, you know, if if they want to be a police officer one day, they bring in an actual police officer to to kind of just showcase. I wonder if they brought in a, an astronaut or something like that. That would be. <laughs> I wonder how far they would actually go with that too. That's uh, but that's great. Yeah, great, no. great to see that happening. All right. Well, let's roll into our social update, Kelly. Let's bring Landon in and see what's going okay. on in the social media world. Lando, what's happening? Hello, sir? hello, hello. How's it going? <laughs> Pretty good. How you doing? Not too shabby. In the social world, Lisa, I've got two quick videos to show you this week. I'm excited to show you. So this first one, I apologize. I didn't do my due diligence and, and research too much into it. So I, I frankly don't know too much about this video, but I want I want to pull this up and show you something cool that I came across. So we'll we'll full screen this. All right. Because it's kind of hard to see. What are we sure. looking at here? 
Oh. This is what? the future, Lisa. What? What? What is? What's what happening? Is happening? This, this is the future. <laughs> oh, it's like a three D printed yeah. uh, canoe. So, kayak. yeah. So basically, what this video shows is some kind of uh, I. I did see in the comments that it's some kind of plastic okay. uh, residue type thing that that's going on thermal, whatever um, yeah. to create the mold. And you put together this boat yep. out of, you know, plastic, super cool, innovative. I think that's, that's, you know, you know, an awesome thing Let's to try, especially. Yeah. If it's, if it's recycled plastic or something like that, I think that's so cool. And, uh, you know, innovative. Well, especially it's like a how it, how it does in the water, you know, how, how much does that weigh? But, yeah. Can yeah. you put a motor you know, at it? I think I it would would think not. I would right. say so. I mean, yeah. I, I think it's like a hardened plastic. I think it basically starts as kind of a uh, permeable, but then it hardens. I think that thing that mm -hmm. kind of crushes it also is going to like seal it, right? Right, yeah. right. It's going to like make it hard. So it looks like yeah, it's it looks pretty heavy duty. So, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was last year we saw that three that first 3D printed boat. It was either last year or the year before that. Uh -huh. um, but it, it definitely made, you know, headlines across the across the country world. So, yeah. just cool to see now there's these different innovative ways to just and there's a boat. <laughs> <laughs> it also it makes me think of like soon you could just be like um, I want a new boat. And then you have a 3D printer at home, and then it can create your new boat at home as opposed to bringing it. I mean, this basically, if you had some sort of device similar to that at home with different molds, you could be making mm -hmm. a bunch of different things. So, right. I need new pants. Yeah. I, yeah. Get some sort of like Make just. Me some pants. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> some sort of polyester denim uh, <laughs> material, and then it just weaves That's your pants. Crazy. Oh, future good time, is now, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so I actually came across that on Reddit for some reason. It was just kind of floating around there. So good saw find. that. The second video I came across on Facebook was from See Through Canoe, yep. and they create really Ooh. viral videos just Sweet. of marine life because, of course, they create a see through canoe. So with this one, it's at night, and uh, you oh had a cool stingray. Going underneath this see-through canoe. Wow, that, that is, is cool. so cool. I think they're based in Florida. I think the company is based in Florida, but then they have um, their products sold all around the uh, you know North America. Mm -hmm. And and really, I mean, their shtick is it's a clear canoe <laughs> that you go to springs, you go in the ocean, you go on a lake, mm -hmm. and uh, you, you're able to better see what's going on underneath. So they have a lot of viral videos. This. Stingray video, pretty cool. That yeah. is very cool. That is so my favorite course, part of any type of water activity. Is like I, that's why I like pedalboarding. Is you can stand right. up high and look down into the water at the life, yep. the sea life that's going on around you. And it's and it's not obtrusive. You know, it's it's just they're doing their thing underneath the canoe, and you're just kind of observing and doing your thing. So I think it's really neat. That and is of so course. Cool. Of course, I have some stingray facts for you guys because I knew you were going to ask me. <laughs> yes, tell so, us. Do you know, what did we just see there? So I can't tell you what type of stingray that was because there's a lot of different types of stingrays, but I can give you two quick stingray facts. So stingrays don't have any bones in their body. What they're essentially made out of is cartilage, which is the same material in our nose and ears. It's just, you know, there's no bones. It's just that kind of skin material. So yeah. Stingrays don't have any bones. And the second thing was that I thought was really interesting that their way they sense food is they have these like gel filled pits in front of their face. So this gel in front of their face that allows them to pick up electrical signals from other animals when they move. So it's almost in a way like you think of a bat can't see anything, but is able to pick up signals um, from other animals. Right. It's, it's almost that way, but, underwater with a, an electrical <laughs> signal so uh, yeah i have pretty cool looking. stuff so gel filled pits uh, i'm guessing that's these here possibly uh, yes I, I could be wrong yeah but. I, yeah exactly <laughs> so, so a uh, google image search of, of gel pits. yeah so we can hey, look it at... works we're all learning here so yeah. i did see i did read some of the comments there was a, a gal that worked at an uh, aquatic center said that you're you know if you go to an aquarium sometimes you can pet stingrays mm -hmm. they said what they actually do is they cut off their um barbs on their stingers uh, and somebody said well does that 
does that hurt them or you know is they that painful or, or negative and they're like no literally i mean it's they grow back and it's also if they were to sting somebody it, that's it's like a bee it, like the stinger falls off well i guess yeah. bee, they die, but, you know what i mean <laughs> yeah so yeah cool stuff there yeah well if, cool if, if you ever get a chance to go to bimini bahamas uh mm, you can yeah. literally uh pretend like you're in a zoo but you're in real life because there's just stingrays everywhere and you can sit on the beach you know, hang out in two feet of water that's like a bath basically and you got stingrays kind of coming up and checking you out it's i love the way you put that but pretend you're in a zoo but it's real life <laughs> it's, it's like a, uh, it, yeah it's terrifying though because some of those stingrays are as big as a dining room table and yeah. they're just yeah. floating they look very magical though and peaceful because they're just so oh they're, they're very friendly gliding too. And they, they're Very curious cool. about you, so they'll come right up. Nurse sharks also. I saw quite a bit of nurse sharks in that same little area in Bimini. Yeah. Mm. Very yeah, this cool, is a cool Cool shot, just random shots of uh, Bimini stingrays. I mean, you can, there's just literally, ooh, there that is go. cool. And get a whaler. So that's a cool shot there too, even though it's a little low res, but awesome. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a magical place. And literally, you could take your whaler, uh, mm -hmm. what I think it's like three hours from Miami to get over to Bimini and swim with the uh, the stingray. So yeah, too cool, too cool. Yeah, so awesome. that's that's what I had for you in terms of social videos. Of course, as always, every Monday at three p.m. we go live on Facebook and YouTube with the captains answering all of your boating questions. So if you're out there, you got a boat, you got some questions, or you're interested in boating and have some questions, join us at three p.m. We go live and we we literally talk straight to you. So yep. we're looking forward to it. Yep. I think last week we got blown up. We had Donnie Rogers on from Marine Max Baltimore, and he talked all things uh, service, boat mm -hmm. service. And we had so many questions, we couldn't get to them all. So I know this following week, we're going to go into a little bit more uh, about service, but it's really, it's an ask us anything. And, and we're also uh, syndicating that program on Spotify and all your uh, podcast listening platforms. Yep. So if, if you are in the car and you just kind of want to hear other people ask questions and just a free for all, it's a, it's a great way to learn more about boats and everything boating. I mean, we've covered so many things, etiquette on the water, um, mm -hmm. you know, how to tie knots, women on water classes, all that good stuff. It's, it's definitely a great program. Gamut. Yep. <laughs> well, and if, if you ever want to hear uh, Stingray conversations, you can always check out Marine Max Boating Broadcast on pod <laughs> podcast as well, uh, where we talk all the Stingrays and the, the boats that float above them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, Maybe that should be our tagline. You know, the, all things Stingrays and the boats that float above float them. Above them. <laughs> Let's change Very it. Very well Let's said. On that. All right, team. Awesome. Uh, subscribe cool. and follow us and tag us. We want to see your boating adventures. Uh, let us know what you're up to. We've got burgies out there. We do MMX pets. We we're all into all things, social media. Um, mm -hmm. give us a follow on, on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, or you can just check us out on marinemax.com. We have a lifestyles blog there where you can read more articles and, you know, access all of these, uh, podcasts as, as you want. All right. Yep. Kelly, any final thoughts from you today, sir? Hey, shout out to Seamus Warren uh, from, you know, the director of development for the National Pediatric Cancer Foundation. Uh, and of course, their website was nationalpcf.org. Mm -hmm. If you want to get involved, if you want to donate, if you want to go on an awesome fishing tournament uh, to for the cause, um, or if you want to, you know, help that, their team out and, and do it from behind the scenes as well. Uh, so shout out to Seamus and his team over at uh, the National Pediatric Cancer Foundation. Yeah, it's a mouthful, but it's definitely a oh, great yeah. cause. Yeah. <laughs> Landon, any anything else from you, sir? What Kelly Berry said, it, it, it looks like <laughs> a great organization and a great yeah. fishing tournament that they're about to put on in the Tampa Bay area. So definitely. Yeah. I think we need to get the From the Home crew out on that boat. Uh, that would boat. be cool. <laughs> yeah, on our boat. <laughs> All right, stay tuned to see if that happens. As always, we hope you enjoyed today's boating broadcast. Stay healthy and boat happy. We'll see you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode of From the Helm Boating Broadcast. To keep up with the latest news and notes in the world of boats, be sure to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and wherever podcasts can be heard. Until next time, we'll see you out on the water.